Hello, I'm a cognitive scientist, and I like to do research, I love it. But there is one thing I have to admit. When you do research in cognitive science, you never know what you will get. Every study is a leap into the unknown, into a future that is uncertain. As Uri Alon put it quite nicely in one of his talks, you enter a cloud where you don't know where you will end. It is this experience of uncertainty that unsettles young researchers. And it still unsettles myself sometimes. And I think it is also this uncertainty that unsettles us when we think of the future. This can be frightening and paralyzing at times. So this is why we struggle when we want to embrace the future. But there's one thing that helps me, and this is improvisational theater, short improv. So what I want to show you today is how I think that improv can help everyone to embrace the future. So what is improv actually? Improv is theater without any script. The audience provides an idea, and the players get on stage immediately afterwards and start to develop the story and the characters live on stage. For the audience, this provides an enjoyable and inspiring evening. But for the players, improv can be much more. It is a mind-blowing experience that teaches us to boldly go into the unknown, as no one on stage knows what happens next. I've played improv for 20 years, and for 10 years here in Dresden with my group Freie Spielkultur. Improv has changed me, and in my trainings, I have seen how it changed many different people. Students, prisoners, cancer patients, work teams, and even teachers. So how does improv do this? At this point, I think it's a good idea that you try improv yourself. So please, I want to invite you to play a little game of word by word, which is a seemingly simple improv game. So before you start now, please don't make any arrangements beforehand, okay? The only arrangement you can make now, please, is to find a partner to play with. So please ask one of your neighbors if he wants to play with you, he or she. <laughs> well, who can't resist there, right? <laughs> okay. Since most of you have a neighbor, I hope you are now ready to play. So, what you will do in the following, you will tell the beginning of a fairy tale. Please don't speak about which fairy tale you want to tell, okay? So, you will do that, and you will do that word by word. So, you will say a word, then your neighbor will say a word, and you will say a word again. You build the sentences together. Okay? To make things easier for you, you might start with once upon a time, you know that, right? Or in German, es war einmal, Okay, but simply experience the uncertainty and remember that you simply speak word by word. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Okay, so go ahead and start with your fairy tale. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, you, you get an applause. Great. So thank you very much for engaging into this. So who of you had fun? Simply say yes. yes. That's great. That's what it is about mostly, yes? Okay. So, um... What you experienced when you did this is what most players of improv experience when they do this the first time. They have a lot of fun, 
But there are other things they learn by the way. So what is it that we learn that helps us to embrace the future? I think that improv helps us to face three paradoxes that are typical when we face uncertainty. And these three paradoxes are those ones. The first one is the so-called preserving paradox. Well, I call it this way. So the preserving paradox means that on the one hand, you want to preserve what's good, what's proven, but on the other hand, we all want to change things, we want to improve things. So in improv, when you start to play improv, you don't want to change anything. Most players are frightened of driving the story forward and they are frightened to give strong impulses. They say things like, I don't want to destroy what we already have. I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want to break the rules. So when we play improv for a longer time, we learn that yes, rules are important and we have to keep things together. But we also learn that if something strange happens, it doesn't destroy the play as long as we accept it, as long as we make it big and exploit its full potential. Even more, the cool things can only happen if we make mistakes and break the rules sometimes. So, when you tell the fairy tale of Red Riding Hood and have accidentally the girl swallowing the wolf, that's the point where your story might get interesting. So this is what Keith Johnstone termed the oh yes attitude, and it is this attitude that helps us to accept whatever comes and use it and make something great out of it in the future. The second paradox is what I call the planning paradox. So on the one hand, we want to plan to take matters in our hands, but on the other hand, we actually can't plan. We don't know what will come. It doesn't make sense. We can only react. So. In the beginning of playing improv, you can see the players being totally absorbed by their plans. They are sitting along the side of the stage and they think stuff like, I will go on the stage and I will be the alien and I will shoot this astronaut with my laser pistol and so on and so on. Well, sadly, the story develops in this time and it might take a turn and when the alien gets on stage, it doesn't find itself on planet Zork anymore facing the astronaut, but it finds itself in the kitchen of Mr. Miller. So if the player sticks to his plan now, he's lost. So when we play improv for a longer time, we learn that we have to accept our plans. They are good things. Ex expectations are something we all have. We all build them up automatically. And they can also guide our action quite well. But we also learn to stay in the present, observe what's happening, and the moment the plans don't fit the reality anymore, we let them go easily. As William Faulkner put it quite nicely, you have to kill your darlings if they don't support your story anymore. It is this ability to plan and to let plans go easily that makes us spontaneous when we face the future and want to act in it. The third paradox is the initiative paradox. So on the one hand, we want to shape the future according to our ideas and ideals. But on the other hand, we need to consider the needs and the ideas of other ones and give them space to thrive too, if we want to be successful. So in the beginning of playing improv, you find two types of players. There's the one type that loves to go on stage, fire one idea after the other one and basking in glory. They feel quite great on stage. Then there are the other ones. They are quite careful. They react to what happens on stage. Let others go first. They seem quite unspectacular and often they feel miserable on stage. When we play improv for longer, we learn that we have to embrace both sides as players. So, yes, we need to drive the story forward. We need to give strong impulses. We need to make things big but we even more need to observe the others, to accept their impulses, to give space and time for emotions to grow, and to make each other a good time on stage. So it's the balance between action and observation that lets us tell a good story together. 
the best question you can ask when you leave the stage is, how did you, my dear co-actor, enjoy playing with me? And it is this attitude that helps us to act together and create cool things when we face the future. So, with this in mind, we can now develop an image how improv helps us to embrace the future. We have two players on stage, and they have nothing in their hands. And then one player starts with a little idea. He simply says, good morning, my dear servant. So this is his idea. And the other player, he accepts this idea and might say something like, oh, uh, yes, good morning, my lord. And then he develops his own idea and says, uh, well, uh, did you prepare well for the duel? And he gives this idea to the other player, and the other one accepts it and says, oh, yes, I'm well prepared. We will show Lord Mumfley how to win. And then he enters his own idea and says something like, well, um, my servant, did you prepare the bow? And the other player accepts this idea and says, oh, yes, the bow is well prepared. And then he adds his idea and says, I think you will play the violin much better than Lord Mumfley. <laughs> and the other player accepts this, and so on and so on. So it's the oh yes attitude. It's the spontaneity and the ability to permanently switch between action and observation that allows our players to enter an amplificatory feedback loop here. And in this loop, the story develops in a self-organized manner with no control by any single player at a certain point, the story seems to take over and to drive the action of the players even further. This story on the stage is in real life the story of our future. So, as citizens who want to embrace the future, we are improvisers on the stage of life. Yes, we could get caught by the paradoxes of uncertainty, but improv shows us a way how we can go further into the unknown. By saying, oh yes, by enjoying to plan, but even enjoying it more to let plans go, and by acting together, because we can only create cool things if we act together. It is this optimism and spontaneity that, offers, that IMPRO offers to me as a scientist doing my research and as a citizen who wants to embrace the future. And I think this experience is offered by improv to everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs>